Chai's is a 15 years old girl with some extraordinary abilities. Due to her mysterious powers, none of her relatives wants to keep her. In search of a home, Chai's agrees to get herself sold in an auction. She's presented in front of hundreds of masked men who intend to buy her. Suddenly another creature enters the hall. He's a tall man with huge horns and his face is covered in a veil. He walks to the stage and buys Chai's for 5 million pounds. He takes her to a strange place surrounded by capsules having mysterious beings. After reaching a room the mysterious man removes his veil and reveals an inhuman skeleton face. He introduces himself as Elias and calls Chai's fortunate to be what she is. Hearing this, she remembers all the sufferings she has faced since her childhood. She's definitely not fortunate. Elias calms her down and hugs her tightly. He doesn't want Chai's to look down on herself anymore. While her eyes are closed, she's taken to a totally different land. A beautiful meadow centering a small cottage. Elias tells Chai's that they have traveled from Japan to England just in mere seconds. He's not an ordinary person. He's a mage who can do jaw-dropping magic. He takes Chai's inside the cottage and gives her a bath. During the bath, she also encounters small fairies called Ariels. Afterward, she's presented with a heart-filling meal by Silver. She's the caretaker of this house. It's been a while since Chai's has gotten such treatment. Elias tells her that she will be trained as his apprentice and become a mage too. He feels lucky to get her as she's from a rare race called Slaybag. A Slaybaggy is a person that can see magical beings like fairies and has a continuous supply of magical power. Mages use Slaybaggas as a mobile source of power. Besides that, Elias also calls Chai's as his family and gives her a rare stone necklace. The word family keeps echoing in her head and she gets a peaceful sleep. One of the Ariels wakes her up and invites Chai's for a walk in the forest. The Ariels take her to the depth of the forest and then offer her to join their world. Chai's didn't have a family before but now she has Elias. Therefore she refuses to leave. Elias comes over in the meantime and takes her back. On the way, he also confesses his desire to make Chai's his bride. For the next two days, Chai's keeps sleeping. When she wakes up, Elias invites her for shopping. He changes his face to a normal human so no one suspects him. They go to a mysterious library that has a hidden workshop in it. There Chai's meets Angelica. She's also a mage who designs and constructs different equipment for other mages. At first, she didn't know that Chai's is slay beggy so Angelica asks her to practice magic. She gives her a crystal and tells Chai's to change its form. In a couple of seconds, the crystal changes into a garden of poppy flowers. The amount of power she has leaves Chai's herself in shock. Elias requests Angelica to forge suitable equipment that can help Chai's control her powers. After the purchase, they go back home. A priest named Simon is waiting for them at the door. He wanted to meet Elias and to know his intention of getting an apprentice after such a long time. After his departure, Elias takes Chai's to another place to show her some flying dragons. Suddenly a huge silver dragon picks up Chai's and takes her into the air. The dragon is guided by a golden-haired rider. He takes Chai's to the secret land of dragons. The dragon throws Chai's into the water and she gets all wet. Elias follows her too in the form of her shadow. The golden-haired man is the caretaker of the land of dragons. He's also a mage named Lindel, who met Elias 300 years ago. Elias needs to talk about an important matter to Lindel and they leave Chai's behind to play with the little dragons. After playing for a while they gathered around the old dragon named Nevin. He's called the father of the forest. Unfortunately, he has lived enough and his life is about to end. Chai's feels sorry for him, but Nevin seems satisfied. Everyone has to leave after taking their part of happiness and sorrows from the world. It reminds Chai's of the time she tried to commit suicide. Nevin sees through her thoughts and says that the living should never envy the dead. Then he takes Chai's to join his last flight in a dream. When she opens back her eyes, Nevin starts changing into a tree and requests her to use his wood whenever she needs a wand. Regardless of what he said, Chai still envies his peaceful departure from the cruel world. While returning back with Elias, she feels a little dizzy and falls down unconscious. Chai's has a strange dream and wakes up on Elias' lap. They are riding a train where they find a talking cat. Just like Chai's used to hear in stories. This cat has nine lives and is already living the seven. They stop at the kingdom of cats which is surrounded by numerous other cats. And take Chai's and Elias to meet their king. The king is a female cat named Molly. She lives with a young girl whom she calls her owner. The cats need mages to help solve an important case. Elias goes to investigate while Molly takes Chai's to the lake. Years ago, there was a man who enjoyed killing cats. He brutally killed several cats till a cat took the position of the king and gathered other cats. They all united to kill that man but his corrupted soul was left behind. That same soul is trying to emerge once again. Chai's is quietly hearing this story when suddenly a person pushes her into the water. There she meets the soul of a girl named Mina. She's the wife of the person who killed the cats. Mina was seriously ill and her loving husband, Matthew, wanted to grant her a new life from the cats. She considers herself the core of this corruption and requests Chai's to erase both of them. Elias takes Chai's out of the water and gives her the task of cleaning away the corrupted souls. In the night, she dresses up and takes the lantern to walk toward the corrupted souls. Before she can start the magic, she gets captured by a mysterious woman and her master. 
They are sorcerers named Renfrid and Alice. They use science to do magic. Elias reaches there, but the sorcerers accuse him of using Chai's as a test subject. She's left in shock when they say she's soon fated to die. A sleigh baggie is a continuous supply of magic, but this power makes their lifespan shorter. Renford calls Chai's necklace as a tracker to snatch it away. She can't take it anymore and breaks free from them. She gets back to Elias. He may seem suspicious right now, but Elias is the first person who treated her as family. Elias advises her to continue the clearance of soul along with Molly, while he will handle the sorcerers. Chai's touches the soul residue which takes her inside the memories of Matthew. He had requested a sorcerer to help cure his wife. The sorcerer told him that Mina was left with only a few years and he needed to perform a special task to save her. From the next day, the number of cats in town started to decrease. Mina was looking for her husband and reached a den in the middle of the forest. The creepy place was filled with dead cats. Matthew told Mina that he used cats to make medicine for her. The sorcerer reached there too and they forced Mina to drink the medicine. In a blink of an eye, her body melted down. The sorcerer only considered it a failed experiment, but Matthew is ready to kill more cats to make better medicine. He comes out to kill Mina's pet cat, but it attacks him with several more fellow cats. After getting out of the memories, Chai's meets Mina again who asks to help them get free. The souls have lost their way to their destination and Molly is ready to sacrifice herself to guide them. But Chai's decides to use Ariel's wind magic to guide the souls allowing the couple to get a peaceful ending. Meanwhile, the sorcerers still believe that Chai's will not succeed but Elias trusts her fully. Suddenly there's a gust of wind filled with petals and Chai's appears carrying Molly. After seeing her success, the sorcerers go away but Elias is still wondering about Renford's missing hand. Chai's is tired from the event and Elias carries her to their home. On the way, she asks Elias when she will die. He tells her that she can die in three years but he will find a way to delay her death. He wants to live longer with her. He's not a human nor a fairy. He has seen thousands of humans but never understood them. When he saw Chai's, he felt that she wouldn't leave him as she didn't have any other place to go. While Elias is saying this all, Chai's was glaring at his expressionless face. However, his eyes speak with an innocence that attracts Chai's. She caresses his face and promises to never leave his side. From the next day, she goes into a two-week-long slumber. Elias takes her to the forest so she can recover faster. Simon comes to see her too. Moreover, the Queen of Fairies Titania and her husband Obron also come to meet the bride. Obron wakes up Chai's and she runs to Elias. Titania is glad to see their bonding and gives them best wishes before going back. However, Elias hides a tragic past of which Chai's is still unaware. Elias has started to teach her magic seriously so Chai's can defend herself better. Elias had made some mistakes in the past so he repents by doing some tasks for the church. Right now the church has asked him to investigate a watchdog. On the way, Elias hands over a ring to Chai's that will help her control her magic. On reaching the church, they get to know that a person has died recently with bites and scratches on his body. Elias and Chai's sever to investigate further. Chai's reaches a graveyard where a creepy beast attacks her. Fortunately, she's saved by a black-haired man. That man is actually the dog she was looking for. As he is injured, Chai's insists on treating him. Suddenly, Alice jumps in between and asks for the dog. But Chai's puts her to sleep with magic. The dog's name is Ulus who can turn into a human and he's suffering since his master's death called Isabel. He shares his memories with Chai's as she has the same hair color as Isabel. Meanwhile, Elias reaches there too and Alice is awake as well. She requests Elias to help her master, Renfred, because a sorcerer is blackmailing him to create mutant creatures called chimeras. They are the ones responsible for the attacks near the church. Elias agrees to help but suddenly someone attacks Alice from behind. Chai's jumps in front and takes the attack on herself. It's the sorcerer named Cartophilus whom Alice mentioned. Elias can't stand his beloved getting attacked. His anger reaches its peak and he transforms into a huge terrifying monster. Elias lets Chai's fall down and Ulus catches her. Chai sees through the memories of Ulus. He always thought that Isabel would wake up again but it never happened. He doesn't want to lose Chai's too. Luckily she is fine and opens her eyes. Meanwhile, Elias has cut down the chimeras and proceeds to attack Cartophilus but Chai stops him. Renford comes over and shoots Cartophilus. But he regenerates himself and presents a chimera he created with Isabel. Chai's can't bear this inhumanity anymore. First Mina and now Isabel. Cartophilus keeps playing with innocent lives. Chai's is losing her control and her magic is overflowing. Fortunately, a blue flame fairy comes in between and calms down the fight. Ulus shows his desire to become Chai's familiar. A familiar is a fairy that entrusts his life to his master and their fates become one. A familiar dies along with the death of his master. Chai's feels reluctant at first but then agrees as she doesn't want Ulus to be alone anymore. They make a spiritual promise and Chai's gives him a new name Ruth. He has overcome his emotions and kills the Isabel-faced Chimera. Cartophilus leaves as he's an immortal evil who was cursed with immortality. After his departure, Chili can finally return home with Elias and Ruth. It's been two weeks since the incident but Elias has kept himself shut in his room. Silver suggests Chai's go out for a while. 
She meets Angelica and they shop together. After returning, Chai's decides to step into Elias' room. His body has lost its form and he requests Chai's to stay beside him for the night. When she wakes up, Elias has already left. Chai's and Ruth search the neighborhood and find a friendly old man possessed by a fairy. Chai's rests there for a while and Ruth continues the search. Chai starts questioning her feelings towards Elias after reading a love novel at the old man's house. Suddenly, Ruth gives her the updates and she rushes into the forest. Elias is soaking himself in the lake. Chai's wants to know about everything Elias is going through but he asks for some time to gather his thoughts. Their conversation gets quickly interrupted by a fairy, telling Chai's that Lindell wants her to visit him alone. Chai's rides the dragon with Ruth and reaches the land of dragons. Lindell helps her get wood to make the wand. The night settles in soon. Lindell wonders why Chai's is so attached to a scary being like Elias. Chai's tells him her story. Everyone wanted to get rid of her. Her mother committed suicide and her brother and father ran away. Elias was the only person who accepted Chai's. Hearing this, Lindell also decides to tell her his story. Mages like him were born hundreds of years ago but they didn't know the purpose of their magical powers or the long ages. Lindell felt depressed from his long life and sat out on a journey. While passing through a frozen land he found Elias, who at the time didn't remember anything about his past, and so Lindell took him to his master. His master couldn't guess Elias's breed either and decided to give him into Lindell's custody. They traveled together for years and visited different lands, but once they were running short on food. So Lindell went to a village house to get food in exchange for healing but the villagers saw Elias' appearance and accused them of being demon. Lindell got injured by the villagers and Elias attacked them to save his master. Lindell managed to stop him and teleported to a different place. When they got back, Elias said that he felt like he had previously eaten humans, but Lindell suggested that he should forget about it and live his new life. Even after hearing this, Chai's is still not scared of Elias and trusts him. The next day, Lindell cuts her hair to use it to make the wand. Chai's then spends the whole day carving the wand, as she is the one who must do it. At night, Lindell invites the elves with his spells, and Chai's dances with them heartily. She thinks about how much she wants to show this beautiful sight to Elias, and Lindell uses a spell on water that enables her to talk with Elias. Elias tells her that the house feels cold without her. Chai's feels touched hearing this and promises to come back soon as she wants to share her feelings too. Elias gets even more restless. Just like a kid he cannot stop counting the days until he can see her again. Meanwhile, Chai's has finished carving the wood. Lindell combines it with her hair and some gems to form a beautiful red wand. As soon as Chai's holds it, she gets teleported to a place where she meets Nevin again. With the wand, their fates have been connected. Nevin advises Chai's to take this as a chance to speak to herself. At first, she was afraid of getting kicked out of Elias' house but then she became comfortable there. She knows that she can trust Elias, but at the same time, she's afraid. She cannot bear the thought that he might abandon her, just like everyone else did. Nevin tells her he's actually thankful to Chai's mother for not killing her. Otherwise, the little mage won't be able to help out so many people. Moreover, he advises Chai's to stop holding back herself. Words lose their colors with time if they are not said at the right moment. Chai's returns from the dream and uses her magic to transform into a fire dragon and fly back. She can't wait to see Elias once again and falls into his arms as she arrives. But the long trip made her tired. She fell asleep for two days and when she wakes up, she thinks about all the warm people she has met so 